Extreme Recon versus Sasquatch Package, two of the hottest off-road contenders. Today we're gonna to compare them both and see which one might be right for you. Well guys, you probably already know my answer. Obviously I own a 2022 Extreme Recon Wrangler Rubicon, but this is my cousin Ben's. He's got the Black Diamond Sasquatch here and he's been out on the trail with us. And this is obviously just a good comparison between the two. Now, I don't believe that Jeep would have ever done the Extreme Recon had it not been for the Ford Bronco Sasquatch package. So I do have to say thank you to Ford for giving some competition and making Jeep kind of think outside the box. In today's video, I just want to talk about some of the main points and the differences between the two. Now, obviously if you guys are set on one or the other this might not be too relevant but for those of you that haven't seen one of these sitting side by side this is going to be a cool one for you right away on the jeep of course you know we have that seven slot iconic grill we have also got the front camera on my vehicle but the biggest difference between these two you know obviously we're talking extreme recon versus sasquatch but the fender flares so the fenders versus the body or versus the other fender flares on that vehicle on the jeep these fender flares actually count as part of the body so you do have a more narrow body on the wrangler and then the fender flares stick out probably a good 11 to 12 inches inches on the front end. Now, while that can be inconvenient in some instances, you can get narrow fender flares, which drastically reduce the width of the Jeep. And it could probably get it more narrow than the Bronco has the capability to do so. But moreover on that, the biggest thing that the Jeep has that the Bronco doesn't is the solid front axle. There's a lot of pros and cons of both of that, but the solid front axle on the Wrangler is going to be structurally a little bit tougher than the independent front, but not with its drawbacks of having a rougher ride on the road. Independent front suspension is the way to go if you want to go for a smooth ride ride and that's why most of the Baja and desert trucks actually do run that system. Now in this one we do have the 456 gear ratio with front and rear lockers as well as the front disconnecting sway bar. In the Sasquatch you're going to have the 4.70 gear ratio front and rear lockers but then only on certain trims can you get that front hydraulically disconnecting sway bar. So a little bit of difference on the front end as well as the gearing. I'd say I'd probably go with the Bronco in the 47 but that's because it has a 10 speed automatic and can get a little bit more out of those gears. Now back to the Bronco you can see the nostalgia is there obviously the Bronco is in the white lettering on this trim and then we kind of have this larger honeycomb style grill here which I actually do really like and then on this particular model you do have that steel front modular bumper with the built-in recovery hooks which I actually like more than the Jeeps because they have the d-ring mount there so you can actually fit a d-ring right onto that the biggest thing the Bronco has that the Jeep doesn't is that independent front suspension now like I just mentioned before independent front suspension will give you a much better ride quality so if you're looking for longer road trips overlanding where you're gonna be seeing a lot of mild driving or even on the highway, this thing is going to drive a lot better. And let's be honest, most of our off-road rigs, 90, 90, I would say 90% of the time are going to be on-road rigs. They're not going to hit off-road 100% of the time. So this is definitely going to give you the smoother ride. And as much as I'm a Jeep guy, I do have to give them props for that. But what's neat underneath this thing is that you still do see a 10-speed transmission that's compared to the Jeep's 8-speed. So with the automatic, you're getting a lot more gear out of there and really able to find the best gear to get the most torque, get the best fuel economy. Another big thing that that I would say about the Ford Bronco though, comparatively, this body is a lot wider than the Jeep. So that was one thing I just noticed on the trail when we were out there. It just looks more menacing and looks a little bit bigger because well, the body is wider. But as you guys know at home watching this, the Sasquatch fenders are easily removable and you can get the clearance out while you're on the trail. It's a couple little twist knobs and you can pull them right off. Now looking at the wheels and tires, they are very similar and they're both beadlock capable. Looking at the Jeeps, these are the same as the performance wheels that you could get for many years, but they come in granite or if you get a 392 they come in bronze and we've actually paint matched ours you can find a cool video of that in the description but on all the extreme recons you're going to get the bf goodrich ko2 and these are in the 315 70 17 size in a load range c so that's what's going to come standard on here and obviously i think they look good they're beadlock capable and they tuck nicely right underneath that recon fender flare extension so looking at the sasquatch you see you have the exact same setup so we do have a 17 inch wheel it's beadlock capable with that protection ring a little bit less bolts when you're looking at this though so this one doesn't have the 30 that each of my Jeep wheels does. But on this one, this is the Goodyear Territory MT in the 315 7017. So exact same size. I do like the tread on this a little bit more. I've heard that it does pretty well in the snow and the slick conditions. Ben actually drove me around the one day when he picked this up in the sleet and it drove phenomenally well going around. The one weird quirky feature is that Goodyear normally names these the Wrangler Territory and they actually had to change the name. That way there was no Bronco out there that was rolling around with Wrangler on the tire. So I think it's kind of a quirky thing, but obviously there was 
was no way in hell that Ford was going to let that roll out. I just thought it was a cool little tidbit of information. Now the last thing that I wanted to discuss that differentiates the Extreme Recon versus the Sasquatch package is the suspension. Now obviously we went over that this has a solid front axle, but this vehicle does come equipped with an inch and a half lift over the standard Rubicon. That inch and a half is also added to the 315, those larger tires, to give you a much higher ride as well as just a better ride quality. Now from what we heard at the Detroit Auto Show, the, uh, the young lady that actually drove us around at the Camp Jeep, she actually mentioned that the Rubicon shocks are built by Bilstein. Now that's something that I've been hearing lately. Bilstein is taking over a lot of the OE manufacturing. We've seen it on the TRX. We've seen it on obviously the Bronco behind me, but a ton of these different vehicles are running Bilstein shocks. So on the Bronco suspension, you're also going to get the same style lift. I believe it's in between the inch and a half to two inch kit. Now that lift is achieved by the front strut as well as the bypass Bilstein shocks on the front. Another big advantage that Bronco has, they are bypass shocks up front, which gives you a much smoother ride and also keeps them cooler if you're running at higher rates of speed. You don't have any of that shock fade because you have extra liquid in that reservoir and you're able to cool those shocks down a lot faster. So kind of a kudos to the Bronco for that. You've got the A-arms up front. Everything looks pretty tough underneath here. And especially if you go to the level of the Ford Bronco Raptor, that gets really extreme underneath. Solid rear axle, but same thing on there. Coils in the rear, coils on the back of the Jeep as well. The only thing the Bronco has is a five link suspension compared to the four link on the Jeep. But suspensions, they're both up there. They're both can get out there and explore. We had a lot of chances to do that at AOA in both of these. And I'll tell you, they were pretty close competitors when it came to a lot of the things. The only advantage my Jeep had was that front disconnecting sway bar just to help articulate a little bit more. But overall, they made it through the exact same trails and did impeccably well. Now, I know this one was a quicker one, but it's not too often that we see both of these right next to each other and have a beautiful day out to compare them both. What I will tell you about the Ford Bronco though, this is my cousin's, he lives locally. What do you guys wanna see added onto this? Do you own a Bronco? Let me know in the comments comments below. We've got a lot of great vendors. We can get some cool parts and maybe do some installations on this vehicle. Is there any other comparisons that you'd like to see between these two? We can do a little bit more wheeling or maybe just daily driving and see how both of them handle. This was overall though fun. I love checking out both of these and I think that competition is king. It creates these awesome vehicles that us in the off-road community absolutely love. So whether or not you love or hate the Ford Bronco, you got to give it some cred because it gave us a lot more upgrades on the Wrangler and these things are pretty kick-ass as well. Now until next time, I am Matt with Dirt Road Cred. Get out there and earn yours.